Today we are going to braid the edge based on root weaving. I was approaching it for quite a while. I've even tried it by intuition. But when I have approached it closer, I realized I cannot finish it neatly. So today I'd like to introduce the edge braiding with a detailed description of how to finish it. A few words before we start. This type of edge trimming is not suitable for all kinds of items. To my mind it suits perfectly for plates, bowls, maybe baskets, trays of course. The author where I found and learned this type of edge trimming is Victor Lachs. I'll share the link to his YouTube channel in the description below our masterclass. So let's start trimming the edge and getting to know the peculiarities I'd like to draw your attention to. We made videos on root weaving long ago. I'm planning a new masterclass on root weaving three years later. Today we are only discussing edge trimming. But let me show you the tool I'm currently using for root weaving. I found such barbecue skewers. They are thicker than the ones I used earlier. I've sharpened a piece of a skewer from one end and it is very convenient to use. I've made a kind of awl with a gradual widening. As for this blunt end, I don't like it. This sharpened end is perfect. Let me show you the way I finish. I've reached the beginning of the row. Here it is. Now I have to finish the row. What do I do? I lead the basic tube through the previous coil. And try to smoothen it a bit with my fingers. As for the tail of the broken tube, I just hide it underneath the loop like this. I'll cut it off later. Cut off the tail of the basic tube. You can drop some glue. This way I finish the row. I start edge trimming not where I finish the row, but at any other random point. The first step is leading a tube below the last row between the coils. I leave a long tail. You'll see later what for. Here is a peculiarity. I've tried a few options. The master who has inspired me weaves from willow ribbons. Long and thin willow ribbons have their own peculiarities, while our material has its own. I tried making stitches through fewer coils than recommended by the author, through three and four coils. Stitching through three coils makes the edge look completely different, a bit loose but interesting in its own way. Now I'd like to show you the option of stitching through four coils. One, two, three, four. Prepare a gap for stitching. For the first several coils, don't pull the tube too tight. 
get back to the following gap. Take a look, please. I have led the tube through this gap. Now prepare the following gap. Make a stitch. Don't tighten the loop. The next step. Lead the tube through the following gap. The working tube you stitch the edge. In this kind of weaving, it is a crucial question where to lengthen the tubes. I recommend you to make a joint either here or here. Afterwards, the joint will get hidden with the following coils. If you make a joint somewhere in the middle of the stitch, it will be well seen. Well, this kind of edging is not economical at all. It requires quite a few tubes. But I do like it anyway. I fasten the joints with universal polymeric adhesive, as I always do with root weaving. Continue. Lead the tube through the following loop. Keep a tight hold on the joint. Continue repeating all the same steps. The main thing is doing everything neatly and lengthening at the proper points. Shape the coils neatly. Now you'll see some peculiarity. I have to lengthen the tube quite often due to long stitches. Take a look, here is a gap through which I've already led the tube. Now I'm leading the tube through it for the second time. Don't let it discourage you. We continue sequentially. Every time leading a working tube through the following gap. Take a look please. Here the sequence is clear since all the loops are vacant. While here I have to lead a tube through this loop. The new stitch will cover the point of lengthening, you'll see. Let's check the way the coil has been shaped. The point of lengthening has been covered, do you see? If you lengthen the tube at this point every time, the joint will be hidden. As I've already said, the tube needs lengthening quite often. The tubes are moistened, but the ends have to be dry. It is easier weaving and lengthening this way. Well, this end is not dry enough. In this case, you can lengthen the tube here, before leading it through the loop. Let's cut the end. This way. The next stitch. Shape the coil. 
Lead the, tu the tube through the loop. Shape the coil. Prepare a gap. Lead the tube through. It's time to lengthen. Continue this way until the point where you've started. Here I've reached the point of beginning. I personally have tried many different options and have failed many times. So I recommend you making some marks. If you take a thorough look, you'll notice that each loop has two coils of working tube in it. The inner one is directed to the left, while the outer one is directed to the right. Our task is placing the coils in the same very way here as well. So, take a look. Here I've got an inner coil, while well, this loop has no inner coil, so I have to lead one of the stitches through this loop. So I mark the loops, which makes it easier, at least until you master the technique quite well, after which it's up to you. Here and here. So I've marked four loops, through which I have to lead the tube. So I've got the marks, let's continue weaving. Every time you make a stitch, especially in this segment, Check whether it lies in the same variable as the previous one. So the next stitch. Lead it through the loop marked by this piece. Well, you can take a thin needle and do it like this. Take a note, please, that this working tube has to go underneath this coil. coil. Keep it in mind that the outer stitches are directed rightwards, which means that the left directed coils have to go underneath them. Here's the next loop. As for this side, there's no peculiarities. Just place the coils the way they go. But here, the tube has to go through this loop, but underneath the coil. It's important. So lead it underneath the coil at first. Well, let's cut off the end to make it easier. After this, I lead it through the marked loop. Let's check. I've got it in the right point. Let's lengthen the tube. Be very careful in the points of lengthening, because you have to not only lengthen the tube, but also to lead it beneath the coils. So I've lengthened the tube, hold the joint tightly. Let's take a look. Now I have to lead the tube beneath two coils. For the first time I've led the tube beneath one coil, now I'm leading it beneath two coils. How to check it? You have to keep the pattern braid-like. Check how the braid coils are laid. Now I have to lead the tube here in order to continue the braid smooth. Hold the joint. Try your best to prevent the tube from deforming. 
This way. I've laid the tube underneath two coils. Smoothen a bit. Now look where the tube has to go. Here is the next gap. Once again, here it is. The tube has to go out from here, not to interrupt the pattern. Let's check. The coil lies the way it has to, the pattern is preserved. The next stitch. I've got two more marks, so I have to make two more stitches. Lead the tube to the last mark but one. Take a look. Got it. And lead it through the loop instead of the mark. Be careful, do it very neatly, don't let the tube bend too much. Got it. The next step is leading the tube here. Let's take a look. Now I have to lead the tube underneath three stitches to keep the braid. Smoothen the stitch. Lead the tube through the gap prepared beforehand. Follow the pattern to define where the gaps are. I have to make the last stitch to lead the tube through this loop. So, I've shaped a proper braid and it looks as if it's time to cut the tail off. But if you cut it off now, there will be one coil missing. That's why I take this short tail. Well, it's hard to count here, so let's count backwards. The tail has to go out from here. So I have to lead it underneath four coils. Let's take a look. The tail has to go out from here. One, two, three, four. Prepare a gap thoroughly. Here is a long tail I left when starting trimming the edge. Lead it underneath four coils into the loop marked with a piece of tube. However, now I've got the braid interrupted. Two stitches are beneath one. So I have to distribute them separately and to lead one of them into the marked loop. So prepare a gap and lead the tail through it. Let's check, the braid is smooth again. There are no overlapping stitches. The only thing left is to hide the tail. Be careful not to break the pattern. Let's check, there is a short stitch under every long one. And there is no vacant gap left from this side. The tail is fastened tightly between the coils, so I cut it off neatly and hide the remaining stump under the coils. Let's 
Rebecca will additionally fasten everything. Let's take a look once again. The pattern is smooth everywhere. You know, I've had a lot of troubles with this last tab. I used to just tuck in the remaining tails and it seemed okay for the first sight. But when you take a thorough look, you understand it's not. So I took my time to make the final joint perfect. In the next masterclass, I'm going to share the innovations I've introduced to my root weaving technique over the last three years. There is not much new, but there is still some. See you!